The first thing we do is we look at the right side of the fabric and choose a column or columns of knit stitches that will form the decreasing lines. For example, to make mirrored decreases in this swatch, I will choose this column of knit stitches to make decreases at the right hand side of the fabric and this column of stitches to make decreases at the left hand side of the fabric. Once we make this decision, we take a marker and place it in a spot that is between the, uh, the knit stitch that is the closest to the future decreases. So in the, at this side of the fabric, it would be this stitch. This marker is gonna separate this stitch, the knit stitch that will mark the decreasing line from the fabric that won't be affected by decreases. In my case, it's just two stitches, the salvage stitch and the other knit stitch in the same column of stitches. You can place the marker in the, in the fabric or you can place it on the knitting needle, it's totally up to you. And then I do the same to the other edge of the fabric. So I'm gonna separate the knit stitch that's gonna mark the decreasing line and the fabric that is not gonna be affected by decreases. Here we go. Now we take the knitting needle and to make the left leaning decreases that are gonna go like this. So this line is gonna curve like this. We're gonna work in the established pattern to that marker. So in my case, it's gonna be just working the salvage stitch and knitting one stitch. So once we get to this marker, we will make a slip slip knit decrease. And we do it regardless of the stitches that go after this knit stitch. It could be a purl, it could be a knit, whatever it is. Later on, as we keep decreasing, it would be different stitches. So every time when we want to form this left leaning line, we are gonna make a slip slip knit decrease. And the classic version is perfectly fine, but as you probably know, I prefer simplified version. So I just slip the first stitch knit wise, and that's gonna be this guiding knit stitch. And then I place this stitch back on the left needle so that the right needle is at the back. Then I push the right needle a little bit further so that it enters the next stitch and knit these two stitches together through the back loop. So this is the simplified version of the slip slip knit decrease. But uh, like I said, the classic version works perfectly fine too. And then we work in the established pattern, which means we knit the knits and purl the purls until it is time to make the next decrease. And when we want to make a decrease that slants to the right, that curves like this, we're gonna stop when we get to a spot that is two stitches before the marker that we placed. And that's gonna be in just a moment. When we get to the spot that is two stitches before the marker, we're gonna make a knit two together decrease. So we simply knit these two stitches together. And these two stitches include the guiding knit stitch the one that we separated with the marker and the stitch that is gonna be decreased. In this case, it is a purl. And then we continue to work in pattern. Now that we decreased some stitches, the pattern won't be the set knit to purl to ribbing or whatever type of ribbing you're working in. Because we have one less purl over here and one less purl over there, we don't work in the uh, just blindly knit two purl two. We work stitches as they present themselves, both in the right, right side rows and in the wrong side rows. For example, right now, I'm gonna purl two, which is exactly what the pattern, my knit two purl two pattern, uh, tells me to do, but then I don't knit two because I don't have that other knit stitch. We've just decreased it, right? So that's why it is very important not to follow the pattern blindly, but to look at the stitches. So if the stitch looks like a knit, then you knit it. And if it is just one knit, that's fine. You just go on and deal with the next stitch, which is clearly a purl. So it is very important to be mindful and not to follow the pattern blindly. 
And that is the same, this recommendation is the same for all ribbing patterns. It could be two by two ribbing as the one that I have here. It could be two by one, two by three, three by three or whatever other pattern. See, again, I just have one knit and I'm fine with that. I just knit that stitch and then I purl the last two stitches of the, of the swatch. But don't worry, the pattern will restore itself when we decrease the number of stitches that form the pattern repeat and we decrease those stitches at each decreasing line. For example, my pattern restored perfectly fine as soon as I decreased four stitches. See, here are my decreasing lines and that's the four stitches that I decreased. Two pearls and two knits over here and two pearls and two knits over there. And now you see what I have on the needles. Aside from the salvages, I have knit two, purl two, knit two. So the pattern came back to its um, structure. Uh, and that happens to all ribbing patterns as soon as you decrease the number of stitches that form the pattern repeat. If you use this method for shaping a uh, the hats, for example, then we follow the same method, but we, use, we make the knit to together decrease over here and slip slip knit decrease over there. And then you'll get perfect shaping in any ribbing pattern. One more thing, this pattern is not reversible. The wrong side of the fabric does not look the same as the right side. It's not bad. It's just different. Otherwise, it is a perfect, easy method that works for all kinds of shaping and all types of ribbing patterns. If you find this tutorial helpful, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified every time I publish a new video. Happy knitting, my friend. I'll talk to you in the next tutorial.